I'll be talking also about offloading to uh, GPUs generally, um, and specifically to GPUs that uh, support the HSA architecture or that are built around the HSA architecture. Uh, I'll be talking about stuff, I'll start talking about stuff that is already in the trunk um, and uh, will repeat actually a few things from my presentation from last year. And then I will also mention quite a few things that are or will shortly be in the HSA branch, so this is where it is. So I'll start with a very brief overview of the HSA for those who are not familiar with it. Uh, then I will spend most of the time on uh, OpenMP lowering and expansion and what I have done to, uh, to, to the OpenMP.low, OMP-low.c file to get the stuff running. And then I'll talk a little bit about some more uh, about some more experimental stuff and what the status of the HSA now is. That will be the conclusion. So let's let me start with um, with brief description of HSA. It is an uh, yeah, it is an architecture that was built around a few things. First one was a common runtime to. Uh, run kernels on HSA devices. Currently, the, the only HSA devices that actually can run some HSA are from AMD, but there are many companies in the consortium, and they, you know, every half a year they keep on saying that they will, you know, that, that, that things like ARM actually, uh, or, or the companies like ARM and uh, Imagination and perhaps others, they claim that they are working on their implementation. So it should not should be just HSA. In any way, when you run an HSA kernel, it works on a grid that is very much like the, uh, you know, the, the, the NVIDIA grid that Alex was talking about, except the terminology is a little bit different. A thread is called a work group. Uh, uh, a block is called, uh, no, a thread is called a work item. A block is called a work group. Uh, we, don't, we don't have warps, we have wave fronts, uh, and so forth. But it Sorry? So we are actually using the OpenMP uh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but but <laughs> the terminology is, is, is very similar to OpenCL. I think that, that they actually uh, have taken it from OpenCL. And there are tables you know, all over the internet translating the terminology between CUDA and, uh, and OpenCL. So um, we c you, can use, you, you can use that. But the uh, most of the things that were true about threads and uh, blocks are also true about work items and work groups. So you can only communicate uh, or only can make any sort of guarantees in terms of synchronization in between work items within a group. And the groups also have a sort of fast shared memory that can be used for, uh, for making your kernels run faster. Um, Yeah, and the, the other thing uh, that HSA was built around, but that is now a little bit de-emphasized, I will talk about that later, is the HSA IL, the intermediate language that we compile into. So um, this is the most, well, it's not the most simple loop that we aim to offload to HSA and run as a kernel, but it's rather close to it. Uh, as you can see, it has the target, to, which is the pragma to offload stuff in OpenMP. Then there's the, 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 the teams and distribute uh, pragmas that actually say that the work will be divided uh, among the different, wor uh, different work groups. And uh, parallel four, that uh, in our implementation, then actually corresponds to different threats. We didn't. We, we are not based on. You know, we, we have actually aimed to <laughs> represent uh, an OpenMP thread by uh, an HSA work item. I, I have not gone the, the SIMD way. Now on a CPU, what happens is that body of the parallel is uh, offloaded into one function, and the body of the target until parallel is offloaded to another function. And, uh, and yeah, as we discussed, uh, and as Jakub confirmed, tar the, the, the 
No, it, this was supposed to be teams and distribute, sorry, but both begin with T. But teams and distribute pragmas do not do very much on, on, on the CPU. So when we, last year, when we were thinking about how to represent this or how to compile it for HSA, we were thinking of using dynamic parallelism to actually do the th do pretty much the same thing as on a CPU. So we would s just run a single th work item on on the GPU, and uh, that would then through the mean through magical means of the architecture start uh, the actual threads when it when when it. Uh, attempted to invoke the outline parallel but that we got m we got it working martin lishka mostly got it working but it stopped working with the newest runtime and it was always horribly slow and we've had all sorts of various issues and when we were talking to people at the you know at the, the hardware side the gpu side the finalizer side they just were not th they didn't think that was a good idea so eventually what we wanted what we ended up with uh, was really just trying to have only the body of the loop in the kernel. Uh, another reason for that is that HSA, even though the standard has support for indirect function calls, they do require a lot of, uh, even the standard requires a lot of cooperation with the host, so the host actually has to look up things and pass it in magical ways to the kernel and stuff like that. And the next thing is that I don't think it is implemented in the finalizer yet. So uh, indirect function calls is something that I cannot rely on. I also did not want to rely on any locks, so I did not attempt to port libgomp to HSA. Instead, what I did was sort of try to do as much work as I could on the OMP lowering side, which I also believe will sort of eventually help uh, with performance, or does help with performance now, even though it's not particularly optimized. Uh, but of course, it means that we do not aim to be feature complete. I I do believe that there are basically things that do not make sense on a, on a GPU, and at the moment don't have plans to uh, to be able to run all of OpenMP semantics on HSA GPUs. But maybe we'll change that later when the support uh, w when things change. Um, but at, at this point, we decided we didn't want to do that. But there are important constraints. Uh, one of them is that the loop is can be compiled for many devices, uh, for the host, for uh, Xeon 5, for NVIDIA, and for HSA. And so the host device interface has to be this exactly the same. The other thing is that I couldn't just put this into into the kernel and be done with it in the general case because you know I, I only have this one which is rather trivial but there are uh, data sharing clauses with interesting semantics in in uh, uh, you know that the hanging off the different pragma constructs and I do need to honor all their semantics even when I actually don't expand them and ignore them um, if some and 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 in the more complex case, the parallel can have its shared private, first private, last private. Well, oh, the four can have last private, and distribute can have different last privates. So uh, that needs to be honored. So how do I do that? Um, what we start is with is the Gimplified representation of that same loop. Um, now all the different constructs are actually decoupled in a way. So we have a target construct, teams construct, all those are Gimple statements. Uh, distribute parallel four. And then there is the body. What you can see is that in even though in the original loop, uh, in the source code, we only had one loop, uh, what one C loop traditional, even though there's this distribute and, and four constructs, but they both actually should be describing a loop, so that loop is sort of duplicated here, uh, even though this one really doesn't exist and lowering an expansion takes care of that. But I needed to uh, yeah, expand this code differently. So what I did was that as part of the OMP lowering pass, that's the first 
of the two open uh, passes that, that deal with OpenMP, I duplicate the whole target body. So there is a nice function that was uh, that mm, hitherto was only used for exception handling and copying big chunks of high gimple for exception handling, and I reused it. And I basically put another pragma, artificial pragma that is called greedy body, and copy the same thing into it, but modify it slightly. Uh, so, and by that I mean that all these things that eventually I want to get rid of, that I do not want to have in my kernel, are marked with a special flag, grid phony, and the actual loop that is going to be interesting that I'll have to, you know, where I will have to be taking care of um, the in, mm, of the i, you know, wh from where do I get the i variable uh, is marked as a special kind of for loops because we have we do have the simd for loops, we have normal for loops, we have distribute for loops. So this is another kind of a for loop that is called grid loop, and this is what I hand over to lowering. Lowering, um, or the, you know, lowering does many things, but one of the things, th one of the primary goals of OpenMP lowering, the first pass of the two, is to take is to take care of the of the data sharing clauses, and it works rather well. Uh, it basically uh, does this to the whole target target. Uh, Macro. I'll, I'll it uh, does create the f the structures that would normally be used to communicate data in between the outline functions, and 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 it creates the code lo storing the data there and loading the data there uh, that actually adheres to the data sharing clauses of the OpenMP. But then. I have modified the lowering code, and that's really just a matter of a few uh, of a few if statements in the various lowering functions, and uh, a special implementation of last private because last private is special. Uh, that just get rid of all the other pragmas. So the so so the only pragmas the only uh, that are represented by specific gimple statements that stay is the OMP grid five body, which has the semantics. You know, when, when we out outline things, outline this for HSA and outline this in a traditional way. Um, probably um, in, yeah, this is uh, probably if we do want to lower and expand things differently for different kinds of, uh, different kinds of uh, accelerators, we might, you know, th th there shouldn't be just OMP gratified body, there should be sort of OMP normal body, OMP, and the PTX buddy, things like that. Th th this is, or, or, or this should have sort of different var variants. But at this moment, uh, I have only uh, only this one. Maybe, maybe it's better if you use an internal function which just returns to you some value. And well, what I do is that I eventually, in the expansion time, I outline this to a different function, and outline this to uh, this is out outlined as usual. So I really want to have a, you know, a gimple level marker saying that outline this from that to that function and this from that to our function. It, it is not something that, that is then folded away as an, as an uh, it, well it could be, but, uh, but it, were, yeah, it, it is equivalent, I suppose. It does. It does. After expansion, after expansion, I don't have I don't have any pragmas. This, 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 these pragmas, these, these two, are, are only markers for expansion, and it gets rid of uh, rid of them. It, it, this is this one does the outlining, and this one is, you know, I, I wanted to use a diff different kind, so that uh, maybe mostly for asserts, so, so so that code that's not supposed to be dealing with my kernel loops does not attempt to. And that I can check that I'm really looking for, uh, r really looking at the correct loop. Uh, but the lowering does very nicely packing and unpacking to a struct of data to structures, and most of that is useless code because it's 
you know, mostly the data is shared and then or, or they are passed from the host to the, to, to, to the accelerator and then back. But they are optimized away very nicely, even at 001. So I thought that, you know, just reusing the, you know, the vast O and MP lowering code was much better than attempting to write it again, even for a subset. Um, but that means, you know, I do not attempt to uh, write or to duplicate every target region and then hope for the best and do something with it. Uh, a vast portion of the gridifying code is actually pattern matching. I'm looking for loops that look good that I can uh, that that I can duplicate and and and, and make those changes to. So so because. You know the, the the critification code, of course, looks has to look for teams, has to look for distribute, has to look for parallel to mark them as phony, and so forth. So the rest, or, or, or the you know the, the, the not the rest, but the next part of the presentation is actually a list of things that I now can pattern match and offload. And this is yeah the same loop that I started with at the beginning. And uh, it is one single loop annotated with a distribute and four parallel uh, and its body. And this is what we were, what, what is already in trunk, what, what actually landed in GCC6. If you want to modify the size of the group for some reason, you can use the thread limit, thread limit uh, clause and that just, just like what OpenMP says. Now, the what we were adding to the HSA branch is support for or limited support for the collapse. So, because the group, the the grid, OpenMP grid is three-dimensional, so as long as you want to use collapse one, two, or three, uh, this is naturally handled, and you can have two uh, a nest of two loops that gets mapped to the OpenMP grid and it works nicely. That was fairly reasonably simple. If you want to have control over the group size, for then what was the next step? We actually allowed to decouple the distribute and, uh, and um, uh, parallel four or the, the normal four uh, loops. And uh, at the moment, I do require that basically the outer loop has to be mm, going over blocks and the, in and the inner loop uh, is only iterating uh, for, it doesn't have to be this simple, but, but it, the compiler has to be uh, able to know that, it is that the iteration size of the inner loop is actually the same as the step of the distribute in all dimensions. And which basically means that if you do this, uh, and of course the other big limitation is stuff that could be in between the, the different pragmas. Uh, basically the condition is any, you, you can't do things that could have significant, uh, that you could have side effects. You cannot load from memory, store to memory. You can load and store to registers because I do believe that uh, the OpenMP semantics means that I th what, what you're doing is, uh, is either going to be the same on all, uh, all, all threads, on all work items, so or, and that is okay, or you're invoking OpenMP undefined behavior in some way. You can't call functions, of course, but you can do control flow, so we'll, we'll look for that, as long as the control flow is the same for everything. And, uh, but this is how you would basically emulate OpenCL or CUDA-like programming. So this is the body of, th this is the thing that you would put into a kernel uh, that is being run in a group of size block and uh, in a grid of, you know, the M, yeah, that's what I was looking for, M divided by blocks. Now, when we were working with this and I was discussing this with people that were more experienced uh, GPU programmers, 
I asked them, well, do we care about tiling algorithms? Because every it seems that every textbook on GPU programming, when it explains the basics, the next thing it does is that it talks about tiled algorithms, uh, algorithms where where the threads cooperatively first load memory, then they work on it, and then they cooperate, the, and then load portion of the data, then they synchronize, work on it, and then synchronize, and then they store the output. And they said, yeah, this is probably going to be very, very important. So we were thinking about how one could write a tiled algorithm in OpenMP. And this is going to be a little bit, uh, a little bit longer. I actually have to put it on three slides. But this is, <coughs> this is the tiled matrix multiplication algorithm. I hope you can follow me. If, if don't, please raise your hand. I'll try to repeat it in a, in a better way so that everybody. <laughs> I was not sure. Yeah, but I, I was not really sure how, how small was still large enough. So uh, I, I was careful. But anyway, it is not very, 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 very different. You have the target uh, than what we've seen previously. We, at least the beginning, this is, yeah, so this is the beginning of, of, of the target region. Uh, we have a, we have the teams to create the grid. We have the distribute to uh, um, mark that the following two for loops, because it has a collapse to actually uh, mean that their body will, di will happen in different work groups. Now in the beginning, I mentioned that work groups can, do have shared memory. So if you, uh, if you define a private variable within the distribute, uh, distribute construct, it is private for the distribute construct in the OpenMP sense, which means it is private for the group. And so that they get translated to static attribute work, work group segment uh, variable. And they do uh, become group local variables. Now the next slide is what actually have how we what we what do we how do we load the mem load <coughs> cooperatively data and how we uh, then work on it. So we do have a parallel, which is just one. The interesting thing is that then we need to actually implement the tiling by by doing some control flow that is not that is not marked with any OpenMP pragma thing. Uh, so we do have a just a normal um, for loop. And because there are no side effects, uh, this the, the pattern matching algorithm can handle this fairly well. Or well, not fairly well, it just under understands it, and it does the right thing. And we have uh, a loop that distributes the workload in between the uh, threads in, in a group. It is slightly more complicated than it needs to be because of the source code that I started with. But what happens is that each thread will be doing this body only once. And each thread loads uh, one data value from the A and B matrices, from the input matrices. And, what and then the first loop uh, terminates. When the first loop terminates, OpenMP uh, semantics actually require that there is a barrier uh, at the end. Barrier, in our sense, means that we wait for all the threads to reach that particular place. Uh, it translates naturally to the HSA. I mean, yeah, but but that's not 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 what I want to do in this example. Yeah, uh, this is so. Basically, all this will get uh, expanded as first, you know, wh why do we have this? We, we first have it to describe how big block is, and then to have the, then it will be expanded only as a barrier instruction, h sale instruction at the end. Um, the same thing for this one, where we actually do go over the small tile and compute the part of, uh, of the matrix multiplication for the given tile. And this is the end of this of this for loop. So this is the each thread actually does iterate, and it has two barriers over here and over here, and it will load load cooperatively from A, and then 
uh, have this inner loop uh, once again over block to uh, compute the part of the matri matrix multiplication for the code. And then the final part is, you know, just again, there will be a uh, it, it just stores the C value, the computed value, to the resulting uh, matrix. Um, is it any good? It seems that it is. Uh, this, although please take these numbers with a grain of salt, uh, because I did not try to optimize any variant, even though the, 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 the simple algorithm is just so simple that I do not believe there's too many space for optimization. But uh, the code that you have just seen is actually uh, quite a bit qu qu quite a bit faster. Uh, but if I add control, f you know, you might have noticed in the code, it didn't, oops, it didn't do any range checks. So the matrix, the size of the matrix in both dimensions had to be multipli multiple of block. If it wasn't, then this would sort of read and write nonsensical memory. If I add those, if I add if ifs for these cases to allow for any uh, size of uh, the matrix, it actually drops. Uh, but this might be, you know, might. <laughs> Okay, we can always sort of blame the finalizer if you're not doing the good job. But simple algorithm handles every matrix size. The simple algorithm handles every matrix size. Because hardware actually, or, or the hardware does set the Honza's exec mask so that it, does, so, so that it doesn't have. Um, but I'll, I'll get to the performance number later. Uh, we can, yeah. Um, uh, but my one, the thing is that conditions yeah, at, at least it seems, uh, I, I need to confirm this, but at least it seems that conditions that do rely on the thread ID are expensive because then they need to be, uh, they, they need to be turned into conditional execution. Uh, they, they, they need to be turned, uh, turned into sort of setting the mask, uh, exec mask, and then, then uh, going forward. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, but the thing is that it's not diversion control flow. In theory, all, uh, you know, only the last, uh, last groups will diverge. And in theory, at least the books say, that as long as you don't really diverge, you should be mostly fine. The hardware should be able to recognize that my exec is totally zero and, 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 and skip that fast. It's not what's happening. It can be, you know, I, I really haven't, haven't looked into it yet. I, I've, I've redone the measurements actually, you know, this week. And didn't have time to look into it very in, in, in detail. I mean, but. So you would need to feel the last iteration. Yeah, yeah, something like that. But, but the, you know, the point was, does it first will will people want to write code like that? Uh, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the, but the tiled. This is, of course, the, you know, the, the best example is matrix multiplication, but the tiling where, where the threads load something cooperatively, then wait, and then, then work on it is, is sort of a general uh, pattern that you can use also in other algorithms. Uh, it slows down the CPU. If you compile this for CPU, it works, but, and it's not particularly slower because we only have, we only have one parallel, so the threads are real, oh, really only run here. But it's, you know, that there are synchronizations uh, that and it's probably not very optimal, but, but it's not slowed down very much. And um, yeah, but, but it is something that, you know, tiling is deemed to be important, so we really sort of wanted to uh, have a look at how to do them, and this is how it is, how we, you, we believe you could do them, and it works when you want to do it for HSA on the HSA branch. Um, so, because we do not support everything uh, of OpenMP and do, you know, we are actually quite restrictive on what we support when we offload uh, OpenMP stuff to HSA, I thought it would be a good idea to let the user know whether his target is, you know, has been, as I call it, gridified or not. And for that, I have added a new OpenMP 
opt info. We we we're we do have opt info for vectorizer. I don't know if it really if it you know how you how peop how many people use it and because I've found it. Yeah. Yeah, it's one has to learn how to parse the output, but uh, but it is something that compilers definitely <laughs> definitely ha uh, have and and should have. So I added an another one for OpenMP, and it you know when when you say all, it informs you about successful gratification, like saying yeah, target construct will be we can change this. This is what. I'm, I'm I definitely do use them in the source, so I'm wondering why how how come they do get they do get I, I do use the constants in the source. Maybe, maybe we always print notes. I think I think that what happens is that is that we always print note. If it if if the target does not gratify and you have HSA turned on, I mean if HSA is not is not configured or, or, or not requested, then of course this does not happen. Even though the Transformation seems to be rather GPU oriented rather than just uh, HSA oriented. It will tell you, you know, it will tell you, that it will give you the line of the target construct which did not was was not gratify, and it will tell you at this line. Uh, you, it's just interesting that it is a bigger, <laughs> b b bigger line uh, line number uh, than the target. I must have made a mistake there. Uh, it says. You know, it should also identify the construct that's not really to the liking of the pattern matching algorithm. Most likely, uh, if you hear that Sochi will keep for multiple uploading targets, it would be nice if, if the name of the uploading target would be mentioned. Like yeah. It's probably, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, that's, prob that's probably a very good point. Uh, okay, last OpenMP related slide. Uh, something that is not in the branch even is support for last private. Um, <laughs> I actually decided to ignore SIMD, uh, which means that when there's a standalone SIMD, I insert into my copy safelen one, <laughs> which means that lowering then basically treats it as non-SIMD, if I understood the code correctly. And uh, it is more complex when a SIMD is a combined construct with a parallel for, then I check it out in a rather brutal way. The reason why I have to do this is that the vectorizer if, uh, that the SIMD processing relies on is parametrized on the host. And uh, I do not have a separate RTL targets or separate compiler. So the, the vectorizer uses host. Mm, the description of the host, and it can happen. It does happen that when you, for for example, uh, if you, for example, attempted to compile the code on a you know recent machines, uh, a, mm, the vectorizer could select bigger vector size than what HSA has. Uh, HSA uh, has vectors, but th the maximum is 128 bits long, and going over seems would seem to just slow things down, so I basically switched the SIMD off. We probably, if, if NVIDIA vector, uh, offloading actually depends on SIMD, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm wondering what it means for my patterns, whether I should adjust them somehow, but, but I, I need to think about that. So that, you know, the same code which can be uh, offloaded for HSA can then of also optimally be offloaded to, to NVPTX without uh, so, so that it runs fast. Uh, unfortunately, reductions in my case are still in work in progress. I'm about a month and a half late in my schedule that I planned for myself at the beginning of the year. Um, what I want to do, and I know that there we can pro we'll probably discuss this at the buff, is that the omp-low.c file is getting really huge, and it would be nice to split it into several. So uh, I would actually really like to, grit, you know, to have the gratification in in one file, so that it can have a big big comment at the beginning what it does, and uh, just separate it from the rest, so so that people that do not care for gratification don't really stumble over it very well, so that they know when when when, when things go the gratification or not in the code. Uh, later in the future, there will be HSA 
GPUs uh, that, that there are probably, but I don't have access to them. But what happens is that even though they use the same virtual addresses, they are not, uh, you, you actually have to register the memory that you're going to use on a GPU. So it's something like copy, you know, so, so something like moving memory to the device, but it's not actually moving memory. And in, in, in terms of the HSA terminology, you just have to say, oh, this this part of the memory is now going to be used by the HSA and uh, device. And when you get back, uh, you have to, instead of moving the memory in behind the scenes, it will move the memory probably, uh, although it can do this on, on, on demand or it should be able to do it on demand. Uh, so that's work that we'll, we'll, we'll need. And uh, yeah, at some point next year, we'll probably want to revisit this for GCN. And, and because you know, with, with the SIMD uh, explicit representation there, we could probably look at it anew and, and, and reconsider some of the decisions that we've done, particularly regarding SIMDs. Okay, uh, more experimental stuff. Um, in July, I actually sort of thought, okay, why, you know, the OpenMP is used and, and, and very widely used and everything, but it would be nice for experimentation purposes to have um, a, s a way of emitting HSAIL from C rather directly. So on my private branch that I do want to merge the HSA branch, I do not have plans to in, in, in near future or even, even midterm to actually m merge it to trunk. But I have implemented a direct HSA mode. So when you compile with F direct HSA, you can annotate your function with, H with HSA kernel. And then this is how you write tiled matrix multiplication and it's really, you know, it's eventually it should be the same code. You have AS and BS group private small arrays. Uh, you figure out who you are in the grid, um, initialize the CVAL, and it only fits two slides. Uh, there is still the K loop, which has to be there over the tiles. You cooperatively load the small, fast uh, buffers. Then there is an HSA barrier that is accessible through uh, built-ins. This particular branch has very many H, uh, HSA instructions that are accessible to the users as built-ins. Uh, you do the partial multiplication. You do the barrier so that so that all threads wait before they overwrite stuff over here. You store the result, and that's it. That's how you would write the telemetry matrix. It's very similar to how you would do it in QD. Uh, it doesn't have the, uh, the, the the guards against going over the dimension of the uh, of the matrix. But one reason why I told you to take this this numbers with a grain of salt is that when I compiled that and ran the same measurement, um, the result was something like sixty. <laughs> so yeah, there is. Actually, uh, uh, these numbers are mean that it does help, but uh, probably can be even improved on the OpenMP side. Yeah, and two last slides. Um, hopefully, most of the time. Um, a bit of news on HSA environment. I know that Jakob's still waiting on for kernel patches to arrive into kernel. Uh, bad news. <laughs> Uh, they will arrive, but if you have a Kaveri machine, they apparently do not really test it with the new kernel driver even and, 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 and the runtime and everything. Meanwhile, HSA rebranded the, their HSA effort, uh, AMD rebranded the HSA effort as the Radon Open Compute Rock. There are very nice presentations all over the place. Um, they do work on the kernel driver, but they are a little bit behind the current mainline. I don't know what the current mainline version is, like 4.8, 4.7, something like that. Yeah, so it's probably like 4.9. Yeah, so you can get, uh, you can get 1,243 patches on top of 4.4 to get this working. Uh, they, they are really on, 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 the, on, on clean 4.4, so they apply very nicely, and, and, and they work. I was very surprised. I didn't expect this to work, but, but, but when I was actually building this for OpenSUSE, 
and there are packages for OpenSUSE for the kernel and for all the all the all the libraries that you need in my private repository if you want to try them try that out. And because nowadays everybody just dumps stuff on GitHub, they have also dumped <laughs> built <laughs> Red Hat and Ubuntu packages for kernel and libraries on GitHub. You can go and download them there. Um, if you don't use OpenSUSE. Um, one problem is that HSA now really, uh, not HSA, AMD, AMD now really promotes the GCN and think that that's the way forward. Uh, and they, do n they re are not interested in the HSA ILs as much anymore. The plans to open source uh, the finalizer were canceled. Apparently they discovered there are some IP intellectual property issues that they were not willing to solve. Uh, in theory, uh, there is an GCN already, some you know, semi-working, well, almost working probably, GCN uh, backend for LLVM, and one other company, not AMD, has uh, H sales break to uh, LLVM IR uh, front end, but they are they are not sure whether they want to. Uh, put out the source code. Uh, everybody else is trying to persuade them, just do it, don't worry about it. But so, so there may be an LLVM based. But of course, eventually we want to have our own. So, so one thing that stays the same, more or less, is the runtime to launch GCN. So the HSA, uh, the libgomp HSA plugin for GCN kernels is going to look very much the same like what we have now. Uh, which brings me to the Brick Frontend. Uh, Pekka is not here, the author of the Brick Frontend. Uh, but they have copyright assignments, like Pekka and his sponsor, who I don't know who that is, but, but that there is a corporate copyright assignment actually completed. The, the only problem with Pekka's uh, copyright assignment is that it got lost in the mail, apparently. <laughs> So, yeah. <laughs> uh, I reviewed most of it once. I, w I plan to do, probably not next week, but the week after, one other round of review. But I've never really looked into a front end before. Uh, so it would be nice if anybody else at least sort of tried to look at the things that they think that might be problematic, whether they're problematic. Um, but yeah, I would like to have it. So the thing is, and the, the, the question is, can we have it, please? W would anybody be opposed to, to what, once the copyright assignments uh, get resolved? I, I will firstly integrate it with the HSA branch to uh, probably rename some libraries, which we use also, uh, header files that we use also in the HSA backend. But, but I think that the risk of it going bad is very, s I mean very low because Pekka apparently has the funding to continue the development. Uh, I don't know who supports it, but but apparently the idea is that <laughs> you can use uh, Clang to compile open CL code to HSIL, and then you can use the brick front end and GCC to compile that to targets that do not have a LLVM uh, target. Uh, but the, but but. So there is even some funding behind it, and he's willing to continue developing it. And even if that funding stops, he knows that he has the responsibility then to sort of help us maintain it. Uh, I mean, I asked him specifically, and, 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 and he knew what I was asking for, and then said, yes, I, I will be there. Uh, but the code is not very difficult. I mean, just streaming in break and, and, and deciphering what it means is really not terribly difficult. It is very C++-y, a little bit too much for my taste, uh, not, not very, probably, uh, very for me, but for a you know, real C++ guru, it would be basic stuff. Uh, <laughs> 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 but, but yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm going to repeat this question tomorrow when we, when we have the steering committee question, unless sort of. There is a disassembler based on, I don't, know, I don't even know it's based on LLVM. No, 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 no. 
But there, there is a disassembler from the HSA Foundation that works reasonably well. But it's, it's really an intermediate language that m makes sense to have it in the, you know, that's also the reason why we don't go to RTL. It's like our Java project. Yeah, yeah. Which might be the Java project. It's like it's uh, yeah, and then it, it doesn't have, but it doesn't have a huge, well, it does have some library with it, but, but I, you know, I don't want it to make it a default language, definitely not, that wouldn't make sense, uh, but it would have, you know, it would allow people to test HSA stuff even when they do not have HSA, at least whether they compile, I mean, on, on, on real GPU things run differently, but it would be, you know, it's a nice to, that we would have basically have an emulator, sort of. Uh, so yeah, I would like to have it. I mean, if, if if in several years we figure out that it's causing more problem than th th than solves issues, it would be easier to remove them than Java. <laughs> so, so yeah, um, unless yeah, uh, unless the general answer today is yes, I will ask that same question tomorrow by the steering committee. Okay, uh, so 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 the next next question is what are the you know what, what would be the process? Would would me reading it all and saying yes and and, and running it through? Yeah, I mean, so, so no, no, no. My, my question is, what, 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 what? So, so the, the steering committee has to approve a maintainer because we don't want both the elements. Yeah, and either Pekka or I can be that. If you, if you, that if you can legal issues, or of it course, depends on the, the copyright. Right. Yeah, that's a. If I understood him correctly, uh, and I believe I did, the, the last obstacle was the lost of copyright assignment in the middle. So, uh, so they are working on it. They do understand. So yeah, I mean, if, if it is enough for me to review it, or if anybody else wants to have a, you do have to watch out for the timelines in terms of when phase one freezes. And yeah, sure, 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 sure. It's very unlikely to cause it cause any regressions. Yeah, I would like to do it. I I would like to do it. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Stage four is too late. So, so yeah. I mean, but yeah. My question was really, is it enough that I review it, or? Oh, I, I think a, a global reviewer needs to approve it. Yeah. Which means he probably should look at it before approving it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, yeah. Okay. Good. Uh, but that, of course, means to asking for expensive time of global reviewer. But I, I will be. I will keep on doing that. But first, I will sort of have a look at it myself. But I'm. Um, not, yeah. And now I'm an HSA maintainer, but I haven't reviewed so many patches or that many patches, so I'm not really used to that. And that's it. Uh, so thank you for your attention. If you have any further questions, I'll be very happy to answer them now or at the buff or at any point later.